you, Madam Chair. I beg to move that this House has considered the matter of government support for young drivers. As ever, Madam Chair, it is a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship. And it's also encouraging uh, to see uh, members here to participate in this uh, debate. And it is one of significant issue of a significance to many young people across the United Kingdom. It is good that young people can actually look to this house and see and hear that their voices are being heard. Yeah, yeah. And can I thank the minister in anticipation for his response and for his officials who have been very helpful in this regard. I raise this issue today following a significant number of messages on social media, WhatsApp, and conversations generally with young people and their parents uh, across my constituency of Upper Ban. We can all remember, Chair, the excitement we all felt at the prospect of turning 17 and finally getting onto the road to drive. And maybe, like me, other members flicked through the auto trader from about age 15 and dreamed of that first car. Of course, uh, you were uh, probably not really aware of the unaffordability of your choice, but uh, we all were allowed to dream. Those were the days of buying a Vauxhall Corsa, a Ford Ka, a Peugeot 106, Simpson Saxo, the list goes on. And those were the days when actually you were able to avail of free insurance for 17-year-olds as part of a deal, or you could be a named driver, which helped with the premium. That incentive was a game changer for many, and I am showing my age probably with my vehicle choice, but what a distant memory that feels, given that now young drivers are facing insurance premiums that are not help, helping them to get onto the road, but actually driving them off the road. And whilst I want to labour the insurance element of today, I am acutely aware of the difficulties young people are facing in even getting to the stage of getting out on the road, particularly with the brokenness of our test facilities and the lack of resources and uh, manpower, the lack of appointments and the volume of young people uh, who literally have to wait months and months before they even get to sit their test. I will indeed give way, thank you. I'm very grateful to the Honourable Lady for giving way. Uh, we've seen rural driving test centres close, like the one in Whitchurch in my constituency, and it causes young people a huge problem because they have to drive much further to access a test centre uh, in order to be able to do their tests and, and practice for their tests. So they're, they're having to book double lessons, so it's really adding to the cost of learning to drive for them. They need to get in the car, there's no public transport. Does she agree with me that keeping those rural test centres open is really important in helping young people access jobs and opportunities around the countryside. Absolutely, and we experience the same difficulties in Northern Ireland with regards to availability of testing. And uh, what we experience is people who um, are ready for their test, there's no tests available, and then they're having to continue with lessons or having to stop lessons and go back to lessons so that they can continue. It is, it is a dreadful situation, and, and I, I think it's a manpower resources and making sure those are available in uh, rural areas, as, as the Honourable Member has, has outlined. Um, but as I say, what has probably prompted uh, so many people uh, to get in touch with me is more specifically uh, that of the exorbitant cost of insurance, particularly in the context of a cost of living crisis where household budgets are already strained and where once the bank of mum and dad stepped in to help, many parents actually just cannot step in and help meet the cost of insurance. This is leaving young people unable to benefit from the freedom that driving brings and that Many of us uh, enjoyed this barrier to the road impedes access to employment, to socialising, to broadening the life experiences and even travelling to study. This effect is particularly acute in rural areas such as my own constituency and indeed the vast swathes of Northern Ireland where public transport linkages are lacking in choice and in frequency and evening and weekend services are often reduced or withdrawn altogether, therefore making uh, transportability uh, non-existent via public transport. The importance of driving and access to a vehicle is acute in these areas for the whole community, including our young people. 
I have no doubt members present today from similar uh, constituencies right across the United Kingdom will reflect the same challenges faced by their constituents. It is in this context, Chair, that I believe we must look to government to support young drivers, support them to get onto the road and support them to be safe on the road, which will, in turn will impact insurance premiums in the future. These issues are interlinked. If we look at insurancecostconfused.com, the price comparison firm said on average 17 to 20 euros had seen insurance rise by more than £1,000 from the same time last year. Member give way? I will indeed. I thank the Honourable Member for giving way and congratulate her on the, the debate. Just when she's on the issue of insurance premiums, would she agree with me that it's important that not only we but insurance companies make a very significant distinction between uh, young drivers who are careful, who take their time and who learn to drive and, and drive safely on the road, and then those whom they punish. But they don't just punish with hi uh, higher premiums for those careless drivers, they punish all young drivers, and that really has to be something <coughs> that needs changing. Well, I think the, uh, the Honourable Member from East London Derry is uh, preempting my, <laughs> my speech um, and, and certainly would agree with everything that he had said, uh, that he has, that he has said uh, in his intervention. For 17-year-old premiums uh, surged by an average of 1,400 and from 1,423 to 2,877 pounds. For 18-year-old drivers, the average policy price reached 3,162 pounds. And I've had constituents contacting me having had quotes of between £5,000 and £7,000 for a vehicle worth half the price. Uh, so, Chair, since securing this debate, I have had positive discussions with the Association of British Insurers and local insurance brokers across Upper Ban who are at the mercy of um, the insurance companies uh, a a across the United Kingdom. And I want to thank Alistair Ross from ABI for his constructive engagement on this matter. The insurance industry cites a range of factors for the increase in premium costs, and I believe it is worth highlighting these to enable us to explore how government might help on this matter. Mm. By way of background, insurance is based on pricing the risk of claims being made and the cost of those claims. And ABI data shows that for drivers aged 18 to 20, and 86 to 90, the frequency of claims and average cost of claims is higher, which can impact premiums for those age groups. One of the largest elements of what the pool of motor insurance premiums pays for is bodily injury to others, drivers, passengers, pedestrians, or to the driver themselves. That is because serious collisions can mean life-changing inj injuries with compensation sometimes running into the millions of pounds. The insurance industry states that young drivers are also more likely to be involved in crashes with multiple injuries and which involve a greater number of people and insurers. Costs of dealing with associated claims can be very high. The industry view does appear to be supported by data, so we're not coming to this debate not using the data because we know that young people, and particularly the older people, um, according to the statistics, are much more uh, likely to be involved in an accident. And this is represented in the Department for Infrastructure and the Northern Ireland Statistics and Re Research Agency. These statistics show young drivers are overrepresented in Northern Ireland's collision statistics. In 2021, 17 to 23 year old drivers were responsible for 23% of all fatal or serious collisions, yet they accounted for just 7% of car driving license holders. It also shows that young drivers were responsible for 73% of the casualties and collisions involving drivers aged between 17 and 23. Similar data referencing the overrepresentation in fatal or serious collision statistics can also be presented by the Department for Transport, Road Safety, Accident Statistics, Great Britain driving license data such as that used in a House inquiry on this issue, which reported in March 2021. We must also factor in the inflationary pressures on motor repairs and claims. 
while like for like quarter, uh, quarterly four figures for claim costs are yet to be finalised, previous quarterly and annual claims data have shown a clear picture of spiking costs for insurers. Payouts for vehicle thefts rose 35% in quarter three, 2023 versus 2022. Longer repair times drove up the cost of providing replacement vehicles by 47% in the same period. And the cost to replace written off vehicles has increased as the average cost of new cars rise up 43% over a five year period. However, the largest single factor is actually repair costs which jumped 32% in quarter three from 1.6 billion of the total 2.54 billion. This reflected a mixture of cost of labor, rising energy costs, which are all too aware of, and the fact that vehicles are becoming more sophisticated with the likes of electric vehicles requiring even more specialist expertise to repair. I've previously written to Treasury uh, suggesting that government in their engagement with the Financial Conduct Authority press for closer scrutiny of the industry to determine if the basis for price increase cited by the ABI and facing drivers are a fair reflection of the pressures of the insurance industry. Many insurance companies known to us have merged, they've left the market as a result, and they actually have exited from a, even insuring in the United Kingdom because of the high claims culture, and because of the issues uh, that, I've, that I've raised in this debate. So therefore we need to create an environment where these people come back, where these people know that we as a government are implementing safety measures that help drive the insurance premiums down. I also note the response from the government to a petition on this matter, which emphatically rules out a government commission the government has ruled out any investigation or interference in the market, and whilst I'm realistic as to the prospect of a government U-turn in this regard, I believe other steps can and should be taken to support young drivers to get them onto the road, and importantly, to do so safely for themselves and other road users. So, Chair, the question is that faced with an industry that provides this basis for the increase in premium, how can government help these young drivers to that rite of passage, which is driving. The direction taken by government must be to support better, safer driving. And let me be clear, most young people do drive responsibly and safely. But as is the case in so many aspects of life, the majority suffer because of the actions of the minority. And that is undoubtedly the case here. There are a number of measures that the government could bring forward that can help reduce the number of accidents involving young people and thereby reduce those premiums for young drivers. I know many of these may not be what young drivers wish to see explored, as all bring with them some form of restriction on that freedom they desire. But given the situation now with insurance costs, we must look at all ways that young drivers can force the hand of insurers to reduce those premiums. A graduated driving license scheme is one such initiative. A graduated driving license is the most effective intervention in reducing incidents and fatalities for young drivers. Based on extensive analysis, this could include a minimum of 12 month learning period before the driving test can be taken, a ban on intensive driving courses, lowering the age at which young people can learn to drive to 16 and a half, a restriction on the number of young passengers that can be carried by a young driver, and a restriction on their driving during night time hours, and a lowering of the blood alcohol concentration for drivers aged 17 to 24. Chair, all these measures seem fair and indeed compatible with still getting young people on the road soon after they turn 17, but more safely. GDL has significant public support and research shows that the savings, both in terms of lives through road accidents and financial costs, would be significant. The government's 2019 road safety statement indicated a commitment to review GDL in the UK, but as yet this has not been progressed. 
It is my hope that a restored Northern Ireland executive can progress the agreed policy of GDL in Northern Ireland soon, and indeed this could be as envisaged by the previous Minister, Jess Normans, uh, at test ground for the effectiveness of this policy. I would ask the Minister to outline progress towards this becoming a reality here in England so that this, can help, uh, this help can be given to young drivers both in safety terms but also in relation to insurance. The other area in which government could support young drivers is in financial assistance towards the inst installation of telematics in vehicles. These devices can monitor driving and driving behaviour, helping to encourage safer driving. However, they can be expensive, and in the context of this debate where cost is an inhibitor to driving, it would be good if the government would explore means of supporting the provision of these devices to young drivers. Chair, I'm conscious that there are other members who want to debate or want to contribute to this debate, and I look forward to hearing other ideas as to how we can assist young drivers in constituencies. Um, in conclusion, I would stress the importance of allowing young people the freedom to drive and the necessity for that to be affordable to all. I would in urge the, end the insurance industry to listen to the plight of young drivers and avoid any accusation of profiteering or unfair practices through transparency and fair pricing. And I would urge the government to explore the viability of providing some direct support, but also exploring how our licensing system can be modernised to help cut the casualties and also the cost of driving for young people. Thank you.